I quit video. Editor Matt, more like, see you later. Ooh, and this one's for Maddie. If you know, you know. Wow, I actually got it on the screen. Yeah, so I kind of quit video and I thought it would be uh, beneficial to share my experience. I wanna share kind of what took me through the process and kind of how I ended up deciding to no longer do video work. Now I should say this video is about freelance video, not necessarily about YouTube. It actually, all the reasons in this video have nothing to do with YouTube. In fact, the reasons why I left video would actually support making YouTube videos. Anyways, the reason why I haven't posted is just because I've been focusing on career. The cost of living in Canada is disgusting, and if you're trying to do it single-handedly, it is very hard. If you're not making $50,000 a year, you're homeless. And that's zero savings. That's how hard it is to live right now. So doing that as a freelancer is not easy. So this video is kind of in two parts. Why I left video and kind of what I decided to move into, which I'm sure a lot of you already know, but if you're just coming across the channel, Hi, what's up, welcome. I do wanna say that this is just my experience and it's not gonna be the same for everyone. The reasons that made me move on from video may not apply to you. This video is not to have anyone change their mind on what they're doing. If you are thriving in the video world, good for you, that's great. Don't stop because someone else on the internet did, that's silly. Now I didn't just wake up one day and think, yeah, I'm gonna quit video. No, this was a very slow progression. Just one thing after the other that kind of just pulled me further and further away from freelance video. You know, it's taken me a while to kind of figure out how I wanted to communicate this video because I don't really know where to start. I've been doing video professionally for like nine years. You know, I've worked for big brands. I've worked for the NFL, MLB, Fortnite, PUBG Mobile, Tennis Canada. About a year ago, I was editing for Ryan Reynolds. Obviously, I was working for Maddie Hapoya as his editor. Also, if you're not familiar with Gondola, check it out. It's a really cool website. A friend of mine started it. It allows you to credit yourself on work that you've done that, you know, you wouldn't typically get credited on. For example, these videos by Ryan Reynolds, stuff like this. It's not they're not really gonna credit the editor. So I can post it on here and kind of show that I did this work. All that to say, I think I've built a pretty good career in the video world. Hello, <laughs> this is my cat Bailey. I don't say hi. Why would I step down from something where I've kind of felt like I've made it to the top? I've reached the big brands, I've done the big work, why would I stop? There's a lot of reasons, but the main primary reason is that I don't enjoy it. When you do something for long enough, you start to no longer enjoy that thing anymore. Big reason for that is honestly Adobe. <laughs> their, their software is just so slow. Even on like an M2 Mac, whatever machine you're running, there's so much just click, wait, click, wait, click, wait, look at my phone, like it's painful. And I just kind of like got tired of that rhythm of clicking and waiting and proxies and broken footage and frame rates. It just gets so repetitive and annoying and you just lose all motivation to do that anymore. So that was kind of the primary reason. That being said, the one thing that I do really enjoy about video is the traveling. Going places to do shoots with people that I like. It's even better if you get to travel somewhere far, somewhere you've never been. I'll definitely miss that. But there is more writing on the walls that I think that the video world, at least for me, did not look promising. Since I've started working in the video world, the value of video has plummeted, especially when it comes to like local, not big budget productions. Could also just be isolated to my experience. Most of the time, companies just want like, cheap video for their social media. When I started in the video world, companies would pay good money for good video. I think nowadays, cheap video is good enough, which is extremely unfortunate. If you wanna do it properly, you're gonna spend tens of thousands of dollars and you're probably gonna struggle to get thousand dollar jobs. And the worst part about all that is that you have so many hobbyists, so you're competing with free a lot of the time. Like whatever you're offering, someone else will literally do it for free because it is that accessible. And alternatively, trying to land those high jobs that actually do pay are very competitive. They're far and few in between and everybody wants them. I've said this before, but in my opinion, editors, filmmakers, they're very replaceable. Any video that I can edit, I know without a doubt there are hundreds of thousands of other people who could do just as good, if not better. And in the end, it's a very expensive career with not a lot of demand. Naturally, when you're trying to financially survive, you take whatever doors, whatever opportunities you can. Naturally, that led me down a path of programming and software development. Over the past, 
probably nine, 10 months now, I have put all my effort into coding, learning code. That has been my entire focus. And before I get into some of the reasons why, I should explain kind of how I got here. I took a freelance animation job doing After Effects animations, uh, which then led into writing code to generate NFTs with those animations, uh, which then led me into writing smart contracts and then front end websites followed by full stack websites. So it was this very natural progression from video animation, web animation into web development. I didn't just cut video and dive into code. That wasn't the case. It was one step after the other. Uh, and here's what I've learned about transitioning into code. Now I should say I dropped out of college while learning code. Uh, I only made it through the first semester, didn't learn a thing. Everything I knew was outside of college. Learning on my own is one of my strengths. I am good at obsessing over a topic and learning it very well. If only I liked school, I could have done something good with that. But thankfully you don't necessarily need school in video or in code. It can just create some barriers, some roadblocks. But the first thing I learned about code is the potential if you know how to use the tools. All you need is a good idea and you can build a million dollar business. In video, not a chance. If you want a million dollar video, you gotta be a YouTuber, big Hollywood director. The opportunity is extremely slim. With code, if you know how to use the tools, you can pump out ideas as quickly as you want. You could create a startup every single month. In fact, people do it. People do monthly startups and just see if one of them sticks. See if one of them creates organic user generation that sign up for your subscription or whatever. So immediately I recognize the potential. The other thing is that it's extremely cheap to do. All you need is a laptop, maybe a second monitor, maybe an external keyboard. Sorry, my, look at this dude. I call, I call Bailey a milk bag cat. This is a this is the term for a milk bag cat because in Canada we have milk bags. They just do whatever you you pick them up. They just they're just cats. You know you can flop them around. If I drop him, no way he's landing on his feet. His claws. Are All you need is a good idea or fifteen and. You're set, as long as you have the tools to know how to execute. Um, the demand for code is high. Every designer needs a web developer. Every entrepreneur needs someone who can run their website. Every tech startup needs developers, specifically probably React developers. I hate React. It's extremely scalable. That was the thing, I forgot to mention that for video. You can't really scale video. I, there's so many people on the internet, there's like, scale your video business. You're not scaling your video business, you're just trying to make more money. I guess the only way you could scale your video business is if you hire more people to help you run your business, which is scaling your business like outward. Try and build residual income with the videos you create. But that, that, at that point, you're not really doing freelance video, you're probably more, that's more like an entrepreneur role that just uses video, compile a lot of stock video, which is extremely labor intensive. With video, it's very difficult to scale quickly. Uh, like it could take you 10 years to build meaningful residual income. With code, you could do it in a week and you can do it again next week. You can do it again next month. You can just keep trying, keep going. And you're constantly building off of what you previously did. For example, let's say you're a web developer and you develop a website, it's really good. You got lots of cool, unique custom components in it that you built. The next job you go to, you can still use those. You might need to change them up a bit so they don't look the exact same. Maybe you don't, maybe it's whatever. Everything you're doing in code compounds. You're forever compounding everything you do. Where in video, that's not really the case. Sure, you're kind of compounding your experience, but you're not, you don't have something tangible that you can reuse and, you know, build off. Again, yes, I'm not really talking about YouTube. I'm not really talking about video marketing. I'm not talking about selling courses online. I'm talking about cold calls to businesses, shooting video for them, or working with agencies and shooting video for them. That's what I'm talking about. Now, here's the thing with code. It's huge. The skill ceiling is practically infinite. There's no cap. You can learn everything. There are so many different types of programmers, real high paying jobs, if that's what you want. I just think there's so much more opportunity in code. Here's an example. The other day I needed to write an invoice thing. I usually use PayPal's invoice system because uh, it's it was just convenient. I already had PayPal, whatever. They screwed it up. I made an invoice and all the lines were jumbled and like broken and messy and like garbage. So I hop on Google and I'm like searching around for an alternative, something that I can just, you know, generate a PDF, get it out the door. Everything kind of sucked or was behind a paywall. So I just made my own invoice generator in like literally three hours. Uh, let me, let me show you. 
So like you just, I can enter the information up top and it just generates a PDF and I uh, print the PDF. Stuff like that. Like I threw that together in literally three hours. If I really wanted to and wanted to make this a business idea, I could attach to a database, put on authentication, you sign up, you pay a subscription or like maybe it's like three, five bucks a month. Boom, stuff like that. That's just one example of something I thought about on Tuesday. I could write a Premiere plugin. I could write an After Effects script. I could do all these things. I could build a robot. I don't know. I can do whatever. Once you learn how to code, so many doors just open. Anyways, all this to say, I'm very optimistic. I'm not quitting YouTube. Just wanna throw that out there. Just took some time to focus on my career. Gonna keep the red. I still want to be able to shoot passion stuff. If it's something that's important to me or something that I wanna do, I still wanna have the ability to do that. I don't hate video. I just don't wanna do it professionally anymore. Anyways, I guess I'm just making this video for self-validation. <laughs> the other really nice thing is that coming from a video world, I have a lot of filmmaker friends. A lot of filmmaker friends need developers. Maybe they're shooting a video for a client's website that doesn't exist yet or needs to be refreshed refreshed or recreated. If you don't know code, take a look at it. Learn some Python. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any thoughts, you have any stories, I want to hear what's your experience in video. I can imagine if you live in the States and you live in a big city, none of this applies to you. Maybe you're like me and you don't live in a big city. You don't live in America. There's no opportunity. <laughs> Every company is shriveling up and laying everyone off and they have zero marketing budget. Anyways, let me know how you feel. I'll see you later. I should probably get to work. It's like 10 a.m. Till next time.